Hello YouTube and welcome to this very exciting video I never thought I would actually make. Once again featuring today the Escom Grey Mid 486 Notebook. Let's rewind a good amount of months where I actually showed off a couple of different laptops that I had in my possession, including this Escom Grey Mid 486. Also with a little bit of a inquiry whether there was anyone in my viewer audience that would have or would happen to have an actual power supply for one of these. I never got any replies to that. I've had a number of eBay searches going on. I've had a whole bunch of people uh, that were looking out for one of these and never really came across any power supplies that worked. The closest lead I got was the Home Computer Museum here in the Netherlands where the owner told me that he also had one of these grey mates and he did have a working power supply. So I got a model number off of him and, well, I started searching with that. And uh, the long search has paid off because this plug, in fact, is not a PS2. This is the actual power supply connector with an entire power supply attached on the end for the Escom grey mate 46 notebook. All right, so. Just as a little bit of a recap, let's do another tour around this notebook computer. On the right hand side we have the 3.5 inch floppy drive, which I actually know happens to work just fine. Here is the cover, the hard drive is behind here, it's a regular 2.5 inch IDE drive. On the back we have two doors, serial and parallel over here, shared PS2 mouse and keyboard port, the infamous power supply, uh, power input. An expansion bus connector, for which I've never actually seen any accessories, but, well, I haven't really looked for them either. I'll admit that much. Here's another flap on the left-hand side of the notebook. VGA over there. We'll test that out in this video. I haven't actually tested that yet, so it should be good. And on the bottom, there's not a whole lot. Battery cover with no battery inside. Here is a cover that shows some stuff. And here we can see Escom Advanced Computer Technology, Grey Mate 46 Notebook, input rating 16 volts at 1.2 amps. Made in Taiwan. These are actually rebranded MyTech notebooks, but you know. I'm assuming that's the BIOS ROM chip. And there's a couple of ICs around there. And there are four screws here that hold the hard drive in place. Those screws are very finicky, they don't always go down all the way. I guess age has really gotten to them, so I've only installed the two that I know I can easily remove again without stripping. So yeah, and here we have the overall appearance of this notebook here. Small little, I think it is 12 inch, uh, 640 by 480 monochrome display. Reasonably good keyboard, trackball action over here, mouse buttons over there. So yeah, you have to use it left-handed. I will say that uh, using a trackball left-handed is not all that bad. Power button over here, brightness and contrast controls, and it has a genuine Intel 32-bit microprocessor inside. Oh yeah. Okay, she's all plugged in. Let's turn her on. And then we'll talk specifications. I should plug in the power supply as well. That would help. Let's give us some zoom action here. Yep, that looks about right. I'll give it an F2. So obviously the CMOS battery is dead. I opened up the notebook before and I found out that it was actually, uh, the CMOS was managed by two, I whoops, by <laughs> two IKEA alkaline batteries, just soldered together. Invalid configuration, RAM size incorrect. All right. So we have four megabytes of RAM in total. We have a 33 megahertz Intel 486DX CPU, 
many of these laptops actually came with a 46SX processor with no floating point unit. Uh, let's, since, let's put in the current date and time. It's the 29th of March 2021. All right, let's turn off numlock, the zero won't work, and it's 9.27 in the morning. Let's fill in our hard drive type. It's none of these. It's a Connor CP2124, which doesn't really tell you a whole lot. It's a 120 megabyte hard drive. We have 762 cylinders, eight heads, 39 drat, 39 sectors, no compensation, 762 landing zones. Well, it's F10 to confirm. As reported as a 116 megabyte hard drive. Checking the values. Yep, that looks good. Okay, video card is VGA EGA, otherwise, it will give us an error. We'll turn off NumLock because it, it's a bit annoying on this keyboard. Now we can escape, save, and reboot. And it's going to boot into Microsoft MS-DOS version 6. And there we are in DOS. We also have Windows 3.1. You might think that's a bit weird sounding, and you'd be correct. That's because this laptop does not have a sound card. So we installed the generic PC speaker driver, which will allow you to get some sound, even if you don't have a actual sound card. And the ghosting is pretty bad, as you can tell. I've completely lost the cursor there. I have installed Calmira 2. If I could get it to open. Which basically looks like Windows 95, we just installed it for, well, for the heck of it. Makes Windows 3.1 feel a little bit more modern. Not that it really matters. Well, let's close that. Mouse button is a little bit finicky. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> so yeah, it appears to be working just fine. One thing I haven't tried yet is to hook it up to an external monitor. So we'll try that right now. I have a VGA cable handy. So we'll plug it in. See if it wants to cooperate. It should output color video, as far as I know. Let's turn the monitor on. I'm not sure if it's actually going to show any signal at all. Just checking the cable. Cables are attached properly, so that's not the issue. What we might have to do is actually shut it down. Turn it off. 
Also checking the keyboard for a monitor key of some sort. Don't see any. Yep, monitor's turning on. There we go. Let's watch Windows 3.1 boot in beautiful colors. Isn't it pretty? It's 640 by 480. Let's see Camera again. The fact that this works is actually really useful for video capture because it means I don't have to use a splitter. I can just straight capture off of this notebook. That's good. So yeah, now it looks like we're running Windows 95, even though we're not. And you really shouldn't with four megabytes of RAM. It's really bad. Of course, we have Minesweeper and Solitaire. That's all pretty typical. Everything else is on the uh, C drive. So we have Wolfenstein 3D and we have stunts. Both of these are games that run pretty well. Although I will say it's probably best to go out of Windows and back to DOS and take a look at these games from there. Yeah, Windows 3.1 without acceleration. It's not pretty, but it works. Let's go take the stunts first. I could type. I'll use the 4D batch file so we can bypass copy protection because we are pirates like that. Let's have a drive. With beautiful PC speaker sounds. We're going the wrong way. Oh no. Can I make this puppy slide? Oh yes. Yeah, the PC speaker in this is not that great. It's just one of those piezo beepers. It doesn't have an actual speaker in there, which is sad. So again, we also have Wolfenstein 3D, which would be very... Jeez, I can't type. Uh, Numlock is on again. Bloody Numlock. 3D. We have no mouse, we have no joystick, we have no ad lib, no sound blaster, no sound source. So we won't have music, but we will have PC speaker sound. All right, let's get psyched. I remember, I hate this episode. I think this is the one with the zombies. I really hate those. Oh dear. Yep, we're toast. 
There we go. His keyboard has tiny arrow keys. It's quite awkward. Yes, I know where. Let's go to the episode that everyone has played. Episode 1. Gotta love those sounds. But yeah, this runs beautifully on the DX33. Oh, it triggered something. Apparently from the other side of the map. Which is interesting. Oh yeah. Let's kill those Nazis. Get all that Nazi gold. Ooh, here's the Nazi gold stash. <sighs> Gotta love all those beeper noises, right? So yeah, I think that concludes the video on the ASCOM Grimate 486 DX notebook computer. It's working well. Aside from having to put in all of the settings in the BIOS again every time you boot, but it's a small price to pay. And we now know that it works very well on a newer LCD monitor, in full color at that. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.